Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to talk about, I'm going to do another episode on the strip pits in Southeast Kansas. I'm going to cover another pit, but before I get started, if you guys would, if you're not uh, a subscriber yet, uh, subscribe to the channel if you would right down here on this side over here and then over here you can like the video like I said if you guys have not subscribed to the channel if you would that's a great way to support the channel show your support to the channel and help the channel grow the more subscribers we get the more likes on the videos we get if you guys have any questions or if you guys like the content I'm putting out leave comments that helps build up the views get the views out there help get the channel's name out there Okay, so today we're going to talk about pit number 34. I'm going to break down pit number 34 for you, which is commonly known as Church House because of Friendship Friends Church that sits just to the south of the pit. Now, you're wondering where this pit is. You'll see it on the map there and see it zoom in. It's real easy to find. It's just right north of Trout Pit, just the pit right to the north. Now, the boat ramp, you got to go down to the T to the west and then go north, and then the boat ramp will be on your right side once you get down there at the north side of the pit. So let's get in to the pit breakdown here. All right, before we get into the pit breakdown, let me, the boat ramp is a good boat ramp, but watch it when the water is low or you will drop off of it and it's, you will get a trailer stuck on it. So if the water is low, watch putting your boat in there if you've got a bigger bass boat Watch that so you don't drop off to the ramp in there because it can be a pain to get it back off of it. The water is staying to dirty in there. So you could they don't really stay real deep in that pit. And it can be tough in the winter time since it is dirty. So that's the water clarity and that's the boat ramp situation. There is good parking there for boats. So you have plenty of room to park your truck and trailer. Okay, so now let's get into the breakdown. The first breakdown I'm going to do is the first cove, which I am calling the first cove, the west cove. The cove all the way on the west, right where you put the boat ramp in. The green right there, there's one area that is just right there across from the boat ramp, and then just right down from the boat ramp. It's kind of like a little water run out or water run in right there. Those will be good in the spring. I've never really been in this pit in the spring, but those are two areas I would focus on in the springtime when the water did temp is between 58 and 70 degrees. Look for spawning bass up in there, fish staging outside of those areas right in there where I put that. The green, and I have been there in the spring, but the water temp was still cold. They were still in pre-spawn when I was in there, so I didn't catch anything off those areas. The blue, it was a good bank in the winter and the summer. I've done good on both those banks in the winter and the summer right there. They stay up on the banks. Wind does help that. Now the white out there is a ditch and that is where it turns right there. And when it turns back to the east where the pit does, if you got wind blowing on that bank in the winter time, those fish are going to sit there because it's going to blow the shad up there. Now, I say the shad, It's I had some comments on uh, some Facebook on one of my videos about blowing the shad. When I say blowing the shad there, the wind does not blow the shad. It blows the plankton up on these banks and up in these areas. And the shad follow the plankton and the bass follow the shad. So when I refer to the wind blowing the shad, I'm referring to the wind pushing the plankton up there in the shad. Just to clarify that for everybody. So hit those, and you're going to want to hit that area right there in the wintertime and the summertime, both with the jerk bait. Um, the wintertime, the jerk bait, um, Omega Bass 110 right here, and I'll show you at the end of the video too exactly um, all the lures. I'll go over to those, so I don't got to put them all into the video here. So focus on that in the wintertime with a jerk bait, a Vision 110 or a Berkeley Stunna, and also a 3-inch or a 3.5-inch a uh, big hammer swim bait and throw those on a quarter ounce or a three eighths ounce and even a half ounce in there. They don't get too deep. So I don't think you need quite need to throw a half ounce, but a quarter ounce or three ounce ounce head on those swim baits. And then just throw a big of a uh, mega bass vision 110. And then the red is good in the winter, in the summer, if you have the wind right there. Okay. So now let's go to the second cove. Okay, the second cove is where I have done the best and seen the best every time I've been in this pit. So the second cove, look 
those green areas there, the fish will spawn in the back of all these pockets. And then in the very back, back there too, is a good spawning area. Also look for these areas in the fall will be good as well. Now, the red is where it really gets good there. The early spring, 48 to 60 degrees. This is where I won a tournament and caught second big bass of the 2021 season in Columbus Bass Club. The early spring when the water tip is 48 to 60 degrees. Fish these points, and I like to fish these points with a crankbait. And when I say a crankbait, I'm talking a rock crawler or a wiggle wart. And those are the two crankbaits I would prefer, and I don't have those with me. Um, I did forget to bring those in here and show you guys, but those two, just hit those, and you want to dig that crankbait into those points right there. Just get it off and dig it into those points. You'll get a little bit of grass on them, but just keep trying to throw it and get that grass off there and try to dig it into those shallow points, and those bass are going to be staging out there. And then you can also hit those with jigs and also jerk baits too. They'll sit out there. Depends on the day and where they're at. If they're suspended or not. But you can't go wrong throwing that crate bait in the early spring. And then if they're not biting that, try your crate, try your jigs, try your jerk baits. And then the the blue bank is good in the spring and the winter. I've done good with the rock crawler in there that day as well, and with the jerk bait. And then the purple, look out here in the winter and the summer. Look look out there. If you see shad busting, especially in the summertime, if you see them busting out there and a good lure to throw in the summertime when they're busting like that is a big hammer ringer worm. I know it's it's got the little paddle, or not the paddle tail on it, but it's got a curl tail on it and it resembles a shad really well. Or you could throw a three inch big hammer uh, swim bait as well or a 3.5 inch out there. For those as well, you can take a jerk bait. Deep cranks work well as well when they're out there eating those shad. Now let's get to the last part here, which is the south part of that pit, that whole entire south arm of that pit. The blue is good pretty much all year. It's kind of like a riprap bank right there. Um, it's good all year round. Good with a jig and a jerk bait in the winter. Good with the jig all year. Don't matter when, all year round. And then if the wind is blowing on it, they'll get up there a lot better and eat a lot better, like I said, because it will push those shad up there. And then the purple, if it's windy, look in those areas right there and target bass out in the middle in the ditch. In the wintertime with the jerk bait, and then with the summertime with the swim bait, or the winter with the swim bait as well. The summertime with the swim bait, um, 10 inch worms, the big hammer ringer worm. You can also, a deep diving crankbait works well for that as well. Now, the green, I've never fished too much in this area right here, but look back there to the far east end and look there for spawning bass or in the fall, look for them up there feeding. So that's a breakdown of pit 34. Now let's get into the lures to throw there. Okay, I was referring to a Vision 110. That is a Mega Bass Vision 110. That is pro blue color. And also, I didn't grab it, but uh, throw a clown color in there will work well as well, or a bone color. And then the Big Hammer Ringer Worm, Magic Crawl, or Magic Bug. Throw that color anywhere, guys. Big Hammer Ringer Worm, Magic Bug. Throw that any water color, it works. Dirty water, clear water. Don't matter which one it is, it works really good. Now, if it's dirtier water, throw a black and blue or June bug, especially in the pits in dirtier water, because it resembles the black and blue, or June bug especially resembles uh, bluegill. So that works really well. And then watermelon red or green pumpkin also works in the clearer water. Now let's talk power worms. I know power worms are big, and I was a big power worm guy until I started throwing the big hammer ringer worm. And now I catch more fish on the big hammer ringer worm. But here is one. That is a 7-inch power worm right there. That is red shad. That is a good color to throw in this pit, guys. That one right there. Red shad is good in dirty water and it also imitates bluegill. And then blue fleck is another one that is good. Or june bug. June bug. Blue fleck works better in the clear water. Just giving you some examples of them there. I don't have june bug right now in that color. But Junebug works good in a 10-inch worm in there as well in the summertime. So hopefully this video helps you guys. 
And if you guys have any questions, put them in the comments, write them on the Facebook page, put them on the comments too, if you would, on the YouTube channel. Helps get the views up there, helps everybody find the channel. And I appreciate everybody um, subscribing and liking the videos and liking the content I'm putting out there. Really, my best content has been the breakdown of the pits because this is not really out there. Nobody really sits down and breaks these pits down. So hopefully you guys enjoy this. Another lure I did not mention to throw in there is a 2K Jigs Little Punk. You'll see that at the beginning of the video. Um, those are my two favorite lures to throw in the pits is the Big Hammer Ringer Worm and the 2K Jigs Little Punk, guys. The 2K Jigs Little Punk to throw in there, or uh, depends on what time of year it is. In the springtime, I would throw a 2K Jig uh, Wrecking Ball is the one I would throw in there. And then after that, when it gets to summer and fall, I like to throw the Little Punk, and I like to throw it around structure, anywhere there's structure that's flipping it up in there. They love that jig up in structure. And on uh, the 2K jigs, um, I like to throw on the wrecking ball. Oh, crap. What trailer do I throw on that thing? I forgot now. Oh, uh, it just depends on the day. But one that works really good is a baby rage crawl. And then also a speed crawl from Zoom works really good on there in the springtime. And then I like to throw a missile D-bomb as a trailer or a D-Bomb Jr., I think it's called a mini D-Bomb. Can't remember the exact name of it. I like to as a trailer on the 2K Jigs Little Punk. All right, thanks for tuning in, guys, and see you next time.